how do you stay positive in all of this? Well, it's not always easy, as you, <laughs> as you hint at, uh, but I think two things help me. Uh, first of all, studying history keeps the mood up and, and limiting my attention to Twitter. You can't study history without becoming an optimist because you realize the terrible circumstances that all our ancestors lived through and struggled through and, and actually came through eventually. Um, it was such a long series of chronic undernourishment, desperate poverty, and total, complete oppression everywhere. And so you you had to be grateful for being alive today. With all it for all its faults, this is the best period of time to be alive. Just compare us now to uh, before the industrial revolution two hundred years ago. Back then, average life expectancy was thirty years. If you're more than thirty years old you should be sort of chronically grateful for all the technology and science and capitalism out there because you wouldn't be around otherwise. So now it's more than 70 around the world. Uh, we Literacy back then was one out of 10 people could read and write around the world and have any kind of information about what was going on in the world. Now it's basically the other way around, one in 10 can't. Uh, extreme poverty reduced from around 90% to 9% today. So I also wake up every morning watching the news thinking the world is falling apart, but I've got this corrective in the back of my mind <laughs> as well from history. Look, I, I wouldn't even be alive had I lived in any other uh, period of time. But the other one is that I try to stay away from politics, <laughs> which is difficult when... <laughs> All I do is politics in a way. But, you know, it's so easy to be depressed, become depressed, if you pay too much attention to what is being said and all the, the stupidity and all the anger and all the resentment out there. And that's why I try to limit my attention to that. And I only I step into that um, river once in a while, but then I do it with this kind of preconception that now I'm going to be mad for a while <laughs> and then i'll step out of it and do something else and then i'll read about what is going on in in science in the economy new business ventures the things that really make progress all the time because that's a positive sum world where everybody who comes up with a new and better idea on doing something tomorrow helps us all whereas in politics it's a zero-sum game they all fight for limited attention and a limited number of places in, in political constituencies and that's why they hate one another and throw dirt at each other constantly and come up with the worst possible arguments all the time and and there's a place and time for that as well you have to step into it to try to sort of remove some of the dirt as well uh, but um, not too much and you have to know what you're up to why do you think there's so much backlash against that oh because it's the quickest way to ruin a nice dinner party. You know, nothing makes people as mad as telling them that, look, this problem that you worry so much about and that you've built much of your identity upon and perhaps some of your political views, uh, it's not a big problem. We're actually solving it right now. That you, if you, some people say, if you remove hope from people, that's the worst thing you can do. No, I think removing despair from people, that makes them even <laughs> angrier. Because, because I think much of what motivates us is the anger that we feel about certain issues. And I mean, that goes for me as well. Injustices and oppression and, and poverty around the world, that motivates me. And But to some, I think, if you tell them that, look, in the last 20 years, 152,000 people were lifted out of extreme poverty every day. Every day for 20 years. The ship is, seems to be steady, apart mm. from the shutdowns during the pandemic. Then we um, jumped back in time around three years until capitalism uh, starts, starts up again. Um, but if you tell people that, it might seem to some people that oh, so this plan that I had for constantly redesigning the entire world economy is not a good thing. Or to some, it seems like you don't care about poverty because you're saying it's, it's moving in the right direction. Mm. And I think that's, that's one reason. Uh, but we know from history also that uh, 
despair sells. It sells books and it sells newspapers and uh, uh, it's uh, because we are problem oriented um, people, all of us, um, whether we know it or not. I mean, those of our ancestors on the East African savanna who sat in front of the campfire and said, look, we've hunted and gathered 90% more this year than last year. We should be all, all be happy and just relax. Uh, <laughs> they were probably killed by a predator or something because they were because it was a dangerous world and it was never enough to to be satisfied you were always close to to death and being erased from the gene pool whereas those who constantly sat by the, the campfire and thought about any kind of potential problem that could come up an approaching storm or another tribe or a lion they probably survived it uh, and they spread their genes to us, but also their stress hormones to us. So whenever we now hear about a problem, we think that, look, that this is the thing that we've got to do something about instantly. Uh, we forget about context. We forget about how to act in a productive way against those problems because we just think that we've got to act or become depressed by it. And that's why... If someone tells you about the world's problem, it seems like they're kind and they're warning you about a potential problem on the horizon. Whereas if someone tells you that, look, it's things are pretty good. It sounds like you're selling something. It sounds like <laughs> you're trying to deceive people and uh, not tell them about the real horrors out there. And I think that's one reason why optimism, even though it is factually based and we um, we have all the data series to prove it uh, it's it will never be really popular because people want to be a little bit afraid 